Good morning, Prime Minister. Halalabasia. Good morning. Our God is good. Our God is good. Good morning. Hey! Halalabasia. Jesus is Lord. You know, I rose up this morning and I just felt myself getting more blessed as I looked on the news and I saw that something else again has happened in london i don't know i don't know i don't know what the enemy is plotting and planning pastor charles good morning sister desiree good morning but i'm excited listen to me listen i keep saying this to you listen it doesn't matter whether you like to believe it yes or no see what i'm saying you might sit there and not believe in no evil that's fine that's you that's cool just live this life and just live this life long enough just live this life long enough and you begin to see some things happen that wouldn't make no sense to you you begin to see things that you just can't use your, your intellectual ability to understand you can't fathom it because listen it is beyond just the human understanding that's when you bring in the holy ghost because the holy ghost is what is able to search you see what i'm saying dr nikisha is able to look is able to go beyond your human understanding and let you see the root cause of a particular issue some decisions sometimes which were taken long before you and i showed up it has an ability to affect and to infect my god see there was a time when the disciples were trying to ask jesus we see that this young boy is bound up is this something that his parents did see because they've always understood that if something is happening in someone's life is because of what somebody else has done so that question was what was in their thoughts Listen to me, there is something that is taking place that if you don't have a comprehensive insurance in the blood of Jesus, you're going to have a challenge in this walk. I heard one preacher tell me last time, I was having a conversation with him and he said, uh, Brother Albert, Cain killed Abel. Do we agree on that? Cain killed Abel. Uh, before Cain killed Abel, uh, they had both made a sacrifice unto God. Uh, but yet still, Cain will call his brother, what is now, 
and kill him. And then watch this now. After the killing, God shows up after the killing and says, uh, the voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me. Uh, uh, Sister Angie, the question that my friend asked me was, where was God when Cain was killing Abel? I'm going to leave it to those of you who are much more wiser in the things of God than I am. Uh, he said, he said, I'm a preacher, but he said, I'm trying to figure out uh, where was God when the act was being committed? Why did God show up after the act? Dr. Nikisha, why didn't God show up in the midst of the action? Hey, <laughs> my God. Why, why didn't God, when the sacrifice was pleasing in his eyes and his nostrils, uh, why didn't God tell the young brother that, you know what? Something is going to take place where your brother would desire to get rid of you. So I need you to uh, stay away from your brother. I, I, I don't want you to be. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want you to be in the midst hmm, of what your brother is getting ready to do to you. Uh, there are some things that we need to search the scriptures. We need to have a profound understanding of the text. We need to see what is going on and we need to understand the laws and the rules of engagement. There are things that God ha, has allowed. Or you can say, you know, because of the free will that we've been given. See, you need to take responsibility. You need to take you know responsibility for your life don't allow anybody to take that responsibility for you it is your life and you have the authority to make sure that you protect that you are well protected listen people on the other side will go for protection they will go for spiritual fortification they will do all kinds of stuff some of them will bath in some herbs and all that kind of stuff because they're seeking protection and the holy ghost has given you what you don't need to pay no money for. So all I need you to do, he said, when I see the blood, every assignment of death has to pass over. Listen to me this morning. We're going to take a comprehensive insurance cover in the blood of Jesus. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The spirit of the Lord is able. The spirit of the Lord doesn't make sense to the human flesh. What the spirit of the Lord desires for us to do and where the spirit of the Lord desires for us to be. The human flesh is unable to understand. But I charge you this morning. I'm charging you this morning to take an insurance cover because there is an assignment and an agenda which has been unleashed. And I've been someone being burgled. We don't want to see that a shooting has taken place in your family home. We don't want to hear that a stabbing has taken place. Today, this has become so common that when you see it on the news, it doesn't frighten you anymore. Because there is a descent. That's the word I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. Desensitize. You know how you desanitize your house, you know, to prevent, uh, you know, bacteria and all that kind of stuff from coming in. There is a desensitization. That's the word I'm looking for. There is a desensitization. My God, let me say that word one more time. There is a desensitization. You know, I was having difficulty pronouncing. There is a desensitization. See, if you become desensitive, you know, if you are no longer sensitive to the wild ways of the enemy, then you will allow anything to creep into your house. But listen to me. I still believe that the blood of Jesus was given to me because God doesn't want any evil to come near my house. I still believe that it's still powerful. I know some churches don't want to mention the blood of Jesus no more. I know they become politically correct because they want to be right in the eyes of everybody. But I serve a God. I serve a God whose blood he's given me to cover myself. This morning, we want to cover. Yesterday was Father's Day. I know some of you pray, man, to people. You don't love me because listen to me. Apart from Sister Mary, one or two other people. I didn't get no Father's Day's message from nobody. The devil is a liar. All you pray, man, to folks, first of all, you all need to repent. Before we go into this prayer, every single one of you needs to repent. 
they will give us. I know these prayers might sound boring, but I'm telling you, we're still able to come on. You know, sometimes the things that you know we're told to do, like it's normal. You know, it's normal. So you know, you don't. It's almost like you don't. You know, like oh, you know, I don't know. It's always a time. You see what I'm saying? Oh, you know. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The reason why we're still standing. Oh, yes, I am a father. In Jesus' name. Listen, the reason why we're still here, Dr. Nikisha, is because of the prayer that we've been praying. You see what I'm saying? The reason why we're still standing is because of this thing that we do that is almost like monotonous. Do you know what that word means? You know, I'm getting some big words this morning. Monotonous. It's like, you know, you do it all the time. Like, you know, you wake up, you brush your teeth, you wash your face. It's just normal. You take a bath, you know, it's normal. So it's like, you know, but listen to me now. It is because of these things. It is because of what we're doing. That's why we're still here. That's why no is routine. That's it. That's the word I should really be saying. It's routine. Thank you. See, because it's routine. So it's like, all right, the devil will make you feel like, oh, you don't mean nothing. If you miss one day, you're going to be okay. That will be the day when the devil will try to creep up on you. Hey! Talalabasia. Ha! My God. It becomes a habit, Sister Julia. It's the law. Listen to me. I think we should be very grateful that we can say praying is normal to us. You know, some people can't say that. Lady Catherine. Some people can't say that. Some people can't say that, you know, praying is a normal thing for them. Can you believe that you and I, before we used to struggle with praying, lift, listen, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first one to put my hands up. Listen to me, before we used to struggle with praying, but today, if I don't come and you get upset, you're like, listen, I don't know, what, I don't know what's going on with that brother. I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray for him because he missed prayer this morning. Listen, it's confidence. I'll be serious. It's confidence. It's a terrorist. Like, listen, I don't know what's wrong with that brother, but since, since he ain't coming on Periscope, not only am I going to pray, I'm going to pray for him too. I know some of you say that. And that's fine. Because there's a confidence that you have. Lady McNeil, there's a confidence. You see what I'm saying? Be like, listen, why is he not on time? Some of you get, listen, some of you are up before I get up. Some of you, when it's seven, and I'm not on, oh, you start praying already. You're like, I don't know, I don't know what clothes that brother is working on. You see, it's a confidence. See, that's what happens. Your life become a lifestyle of prayer. That's the maturity that you never used to have. But some of you didn't even know what to pray before, how to pray. But now look at where you are. Listen to me. There is a victory. Now when you shout, you're not shouting because your belly is empty. You're shouting because you are full. And there is an overflow that is coming from the inside of your belly. Hey! Halalabasia. Hey, my God, Jesus, this is what my house shall be called the house of prayer. You used to think that was a building. He's talking about you. My house, my house, this is his house. It shall be a house of prayer, Dr. Nikisha, because listen, he is making intercession. He cannot come and dwell in a vessel, oh God. He cannot come and live in a vessel that is foreign to him. The vessel that he connects to has to be a vessel of prayer. Hey, Billy Basi, I just received that information this morning. His house shall be called a house of prayer. And he's sitting at the right hand side of the father Making intercession for you and I Intercession is prayer So what is now He cannot come and dwell in a vessel Some of you, you want him to come and live in you But listen to me Your vessel is foreign to him Because when he comes into your vessel All you want to do is do worldly things He cannot live in a worldly body It's got to be a praying vessel Hey, my God I feel it I said I feel it Oh, oh, listen, I'm in my zone. I just got into my zone right now, lady. I, I'm, I just got in my zone. Just give me a few more minutes. I'm getting warmed up. I just got into my zone. Hey, listen to me. That's what he said. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But guess what you've turned into? And then he goes on further on to say that, listen to me. I'm not just going to go to the father and sit down and look pretty. I'm going because I need to be making intercession constantly in his face. But listen to me now. If you open up your door, I'm going to come and live in your vessel. But how can I come and live in your vessel when you don't pray? You know, imagine if I was hungry. 
You keep inviting me to your house, Lady Lack. And you need to change that name because I don't like that name, Lack. You know, we don't believe in Lack. It's favor. Ho! Oh. Malalaba says, Sister Julia. Lady Mac, imagine inviting me to your house every day. Overcome as sister Angie, listen to me. And then I come there and I'm hungry and you don't give me no food, but you keep wanting me to come into your house. Listen to me. When I come there, wise, I say, okay, maybe you made a mistake. Second time, I'll be like, ah, this is to taking me for granted. By the third time, I'll be like, you know what? I ain't coming there. Even if you, I ain't coming. Because I'm going to go to a house where my hunger is going to be fed. I'm going to go see somebody who will take care of my hunger. You want Jesus to come into your house, but you don't want to pray. Sister Akila, you, Sister Cheryl, you want Jesus to come to your... Saints today want Jesus to come and live with them. But listen to me, you serving the devil every day, Pastor Charles, Sister Desiree. You serving the devil every day. Jesus ain't gonna, gonna come and live in your house and listen to that rap music that you listen to all the time. Smoking all that reef and all that kind of... Jesus is not gonna be a partaker in that. When he comes to your house, there's got to be order. It's got to be a meal that he can be a partaker of. We want Jesus in our lives, but we don't want to pray. The 21st century believer, you know, the, you know, the one that just makes noise in the church every Sunday. They just want to show up on a Sunday because, you know, they want it to feel as though they pray. But they don't, Monday to Saturday, they live like the devil. Monday to Saturday, the devil lives in their house. Monday to Saturday, their doors are open to the devil. Monday to Saturday, they sleep with the devil. They smoke reefer with the devil. They drink with the devil. But come Sunday, they want Jesus to come into their life. You must think, listen. Listen to me. You must think. You must think. You must think. Jesus don't see what you do from Monday to Saturday. But I rose up this morning to let you understand. That listen to me. There is still time for you to get it right. Fix that life. Fix it. You know I didn't plan this. I never planned this stuff. He just comes and talks when I come on. Don't get upset with me this morning, okay? The truth is still right. The truth is still right. Zevo in the name of Jesus. The truth is still right. I'd rather you tell me, especially listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Destiny one. Listen to me. Listen. 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 In especially in the See, for the word of the Lord to say, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That lets you know that the truth is going to eventually, what just now, become a rare commodity. People like to hear lies. Your house is coming. Yeah, they'll jump and they'll fall out. They ain't got no job, but they still believe that the house is coming. Your husband is coming, but you made no preparation for no man to come into your life. Your wife is coming, but you beat women. Rather than fixing what needs to be fixed in your life. You want to own a business. But the little that you have, you don't even offer anything up unto the Lord. See, I was sharing this with, you know, I was trying to explain something to my wife. You know, God wants to be first. Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know God wants to be first? See, the problem with Cain and Abel, you know, it wasn't so much of the fact that, you know, God needed anything from them. See, God wants to be first. When you get your money, before you buy anything, before you go to the store or whatever, God would, God, God wants to be first. Do you see what I'm saying? So it is not so much about fighting. It's about understanding the principle. So when you get the money, the first thing that needs to come out is his portion. If you put him second, God ain't pleased. I don't, I don't know if you know this thing. But you know, it's just a revelation that I was getting. You see what I'm saying? He wants to be first. That's why he said, whatever opens up the womb first is mine. That's why Mary had to be used for Christ. Because the first thing that came out of her womb, God said, listen to me. I want to be first. I don't want to be second. I'm never second. I'm first. That's why, listen to me, you know, you, you know, uh, uh, something, there's a song that goes like, and theologically it's wrong because, you know, it talks about, you know, God be behind you. How can, how can God be behind you? You don't lead God. He leads you. See, that's why I said, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I just got, he leads me. See, he does the leading and I, and I do the following. See, some of you, you don't mind God being in a car with you, but you want to be the driver. You don't mind God being in the car with you, but you want to be the driver. 
and you want God to be the passenger. Lady Luck, I believe after this you change the name, right? Are we cool? Are we cool? Change to Lady Favor. Ha! Yes, Lord. You don't mind God being in the car, but you want God to be the passenger. So that you can do the navigation. You know, you, you know, you ain't gonna lead God nowhere. You can't lead God. You can't take God anywhere that He hasn't already been. Sister Cheryl. You can't take God anywhere that He hasn't already been. He is the chief, He is the commander in chief, the number one, the numero uno. Number one. There is no negotiations. He is number one. And when you put him in the driving seat, he is the one who will take you on a journey. He will take you on the ride that you've never been before. He said, I will show you things. I will show you great and mighty things. Listen, there are some things that you will not see on your own. He is the one who will show it to you. Lift your hands. Listen to me. Please forgive me for the way I look, okay? I'm, I'm trying to get ready for a call to prayer, you know, so, you know, just excuse my look, okay? I'm trying to get ready because, listen to me, I know that it is God that has made this possible, okay? And, and, and in the next couple of days, I'm going to call some, ran I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call you to some random prayer times, okay? Those of you who can make it's going to be on the prayer line. It's going to be random. It's going to be random. Get ready. I'm going to, because listen to me, I, I need us to be in position. Okay, I need us to be in position for what God has designed for us to have. In Jesus' mighty name. Hey, my God, I feel God. I feel God. And listen to me, this week, I don't know what day is going to be. I'm going to go to the prayer mountain before, before, before I travel. Okay, before I jump on that flight and come to America, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the prayer mountain to pray. I'm going to take every name that has been registered to the prayer conference. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to see the face of God. I'm going to go crazy up on that mountain. I'm going to cry out before God because I don't want, I don't want to fly all this way just for normal. I want there to be something unique and different. You hear me? So come and support your brother. Okay, every single one of you come and those who can make it, obviously, come and support your brother. Okay? You know me. Some of you being with me, you, you, you know me. I don't need to say, you just know. I'm just real and I'm transparent. I want you to really be connected to Christ. Okay? Ha! Close your eyes. Let's pray. Ha! I feel God. Okay. Hey! Zebo. The song that's playing in the background, he's done it. It's done already. He's done it already. It's already done. 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 Jesus loves me. God bless you. Thank you. You know, I value, listen to me, I value relationships, you know, the longevity. Because, let's see, uh, you know, the, uh, <laughs> I, I value, I value the longevity. You know, in, the, in, in, in Christendom today, people are very fickle. You know, I, I, sometimes I look back at some of the old messages. Some people are, oh, the Lord told me to do this and to do this and do that. And now they're nowhere to be seen. You know, in Ghana, in Africa, if somebody does that, uh, you know, it means they're nowhere to be seen. You know, I look at some of the messages and I say, Sister Mary, what happened to this person? The Lord told me to do this, the Lord told me to do that, and now they're nowhere to be seen. They just disappear. They just disappear. And listen to me, uh, you know, I just, uh, thank you, Sister Cheryl. Listen, just support, just give a little something, okay, to offset the budget, you know, the cost of hosting the conference, okay? Just support, support your brother, okay? Support your brother, okay? So we're, we're, we're doing great stuff. You know, I, I can't wait for us to harvest, like, physically, all the stuff that we've been growing out of the path. You know, I can't wait for that to be like a harvest. Ha! Yes, Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait. And that's why I want to see some of you at a call to prayer. Okay? We can even fit in a meeting. Just, we're just going to talk. We'll just talk about the, the projects that we're doing, that we're undertaking. Okay? I'm excited. I feel an excitement in my belly. Seems like I was fighting some stuff, but I just feel an excitement in my belly. Hey, yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ha! Yes, Lord. In the name of... I feel 
yeah, we can do some, you know, we can just do some impromptu thing, you know, like maybe one of the days. I, I just want to let you understand what is going on. You know, I really want you to understand what is going on. We're doing some great stuff. The best is yet to come. You know, God has connected me to some divine people here. You'll be amazed by what God is doing. You'll be amazed by what God is doing. And I want to share with you what the Lord is doing, okay? Uh, yes, Lord. Villevo. Ah, yes, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Those of you going to work. Those of you that have your own businesses. Those of you that are in the course of looking for jobs. None of us can do without the blood of Jesus. If you have a colleague, we, you know, we've been hearing uh, people who've been fired from the job going back into the workplace and shooting up and doing all kinds of craziness. But because of the blood of Jesus, you are protected. Because of the saving grace of Jehovah, I said you are protected and you are covered. And the hand of the Lord is indeed over your life. I pray and I prophesy at the same time. Hey, Zava. I said the hand of God is indeed on your life. The hand of the one who died and rose again on the third day is on your life. His hand is like a remote control and it is going to push you into the places that you need to be. Into the directions that you need to take. Your steps are going to be and have already been ordered by the Lord. I proclaim that every dirt, the Bible says, when you go to a place and you're not received, he said, shake the dust off your feet. Listen to me. I know it sounds crazy, but listen to this now. Listen to this. I need you to shake every doubt off your feet, every dust off your feet, any negativity, shake it off your feet. Because the doors that are about to open unto you, you cannot walk into those doors. With those things on your feet. I just picked up something. The Lord. Ha! Listen to this now. The spirit of the Lord is impressing on my heart right now. The devil doesn't mind the doors opening for you. Uh, because there's a scripture that says that for a great and effective door has been opened unto me. But there are many adversaries. You know that scripture? Uh, for a great and effective door has been opened for Sister Angie, for Minister Jerry, for Sister Cheryl. Uh, for a great and effective door has been opened to prayer mantle. The devil doesn't mind that. See, because the part where the enemy is concerned about is the part that says, but there are many adversaries. And some of us, the adversary, what is now, doesn't mind tagging along and walking through that door with you because listen when you walk through that door i'm going to disgrace you i'm not going to close the door because if i close the door you will know that the enemy is fighting you but if the door opens effortlessly like oh look at that i just walk into that door look at how wonderful look at how awesome it is lady catherine see but you don't know that it wasn't just you that walked through the door when you walk through the door, singleness walked in with you. When you walk through the door, poverty walked in with you. When you walk through the door, murder walked in with you. See, so what you need to do is you need to shake those things off your feet and say, I break away from anything that will try. Listen to me. When God called, what I okay, so God never called a lot. God told Abraham to get up from his father's house. Sister Mavis. But then Abraham is the one that took Lot. You know the story. Or if you don't, go check it out in the Genesis. See what Lot ended up doing to his uncle. Read the text and you will see the behavior of brother Lot, Sister Cheryl. It baffled me. In the end, he chose the land that looked like the Garden of Eden. That's how he ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was not just only baggage. He was everything what is now. And let, okay, pray for me that tonight I come on. Because I'm going to show you the true revelation of the inheritance. Okay? Uh, the true revelation 
of the inheritance that God gave to Abraham was not fully revealed until he got rid of Lot. Sister Julia, I said the true revelation of the land and everything that God was going to give to Abraham it was not fully given to him until he got rid of Lot. And I'm going to come on tonight and we're going to dissect the word. Okay? Let me pray. I'm excited. Let me get out of the way. Hey! God, we thank you this night, this morning, this afternoon. Committing every soul into your care. Guide, protect, teach us. Show us the way to go. In the name of Yeshua the Christ, the Son of the living God. God, in Jesus' name, amen. This is a summon. Meet me tonight. We will dissect the word. You hear me? Meet me tonight. We're going to go through the text and I'm going to show you when God called it. There are some things that God will never give us the full revelation of until we get rid of some people. And I'm going to show you. Sister Sheriff, by the time I finish, you, you, you will really run. There are some things. There are some things that God will not fully reveal the fullness of it to us until some people are separated from us. You know, lot. Do you know what that word lot means? It means a veil. It's a covering. Lot, his name means a veil, covering. I'm going to teach you some stuff tonight. Some things that we need to disconnect from. Because as long as they're around you, they operate like a veil. They cover you. They prevent you from seeing what it is that you're supposed to see. Hey! Zevo. Le prosikapa. You know I know my word. You know I know. You know I know the text. We're going we're gonna to do it tonight. Okay? We're going to come on tonight. We're going to talk about it. I love you so much. Okay? Get, pray for your brother. Okay? I got, I got a few things to fit, to fit in this week. Okay? Got a few things to fit in this because I'm expecting. I'm expecting an overflow. In Jesus' name. I will see you tonight. I love you, okay? In Jesus' name. We're praying. Sister Boyd. Mm. Okay, Sister Boyd. Sister Boyd, do me a favor. Email me to call you, if that makes sense. Email me your number so I'll call you, okay? You know the email, prayermantle3 at gmail.com. Email me so I'll call you. I'll call you today. Okay? Please. Okay? But every one of us, we're going to come on tonight. Okay? We're going to come on tonight. Sister Boyd, did you see my message? Did, did you hear? Did you, did you just hear me? I want to see you before I go. Did you, did, did you hear me? I think the name is Boyd, your husband. Okay, so email me the number and I'll call you, okay? Okay, love you all. Even though you didn't wish me no Father's Day, listen to me. Listen, prayer man, some of you still need to repent. After this, go lay down for seven minutes and say, God, I repent. Do you believe God will tell someone to leave their husband? Do I believe God will do that? Well, you know, the Bible says, see, your free will, the choice that you made. I don't know if it's personal, but you know, every case has its own, you know, like, you know, how, see, it's a free will, it's a choice that the person made. God is not going to come and say, do this. When you find yourself in certain situations or certain circumstances, that's why you seek counsel, you seek advice, you try everything. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it now. You're too late. Happy fun. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. But I still love you. I still love you, prayer mantle. Ah! God bless you. Somebody said, somebody, I said I was going now. Yeah, but you could have emailed me. No? Oh. You could have emailed me. You could have emailed me. You repent god bless you i love you all yeah I've, I've got i've got i've got i've got i've got children in the gospel of jesus christ yeah i had to you know that they, they had planned something for me so i had to quickly come on and get off it was good though i mean i did go i guess well, I, you know there was swimming but i was just sleeping you know, me, me and swimming, I, I told them that if the Lord wanted me to be, you know, like in them swimming, them kind of stuff, he would have put me in there. But the last time I checked, he put me on this earth. You know, I'm very, I'm very silly like that. Oh, I was like, hey, you put me on this earth. You didn't put me in the sea or, or, you know, in the beach or whatever. Pray for me, my deliverance. Because, you know, me and that water type thing, you know, the swimming thing, it, we, we don't mix. We're not, we, you know, we're not friends.
So get ready for tonight, okay? I'm just being silly. Get ready for tonight. We're going to talk some more. Okay? We're going to have a proper discussion about this thing. Oh, I can't swim neither. I ain't ashamed of that. That's what somebody said. He would have made you a duck. That's true. But he put me on this earth. He said, he said, dominate. Have dominion. I mean, I dominate, but you know, I don't have to be in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Jesus walked on the sea. You know? He walked. He didn't swim. He walked. Yes, Lord. Later. I had a good time though. It was great. I love you all, okay? Please, please. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lady Anne. So sorry to hear that. Please, tonight, okay? We're going to do what we have to do, okay? In Jesus' name. I see you tonight. Hey! Hey, listen. See, you, you see the guy that's singing this song? We praise thy name. He is the biggest artist in Ghana. Like, you know, gospel. He won the best male gospel, you know, awards. Are you Ghanaian? 85% of Ghanaians can't swim. Oh, is that a fact? So you see the gentleman that's singing? I'm trying to get him to a call to prayer. His name is Joe Metal. Fantastic guy. I mean, like, when you know somebody, you know, like, personally. Fantastic spirit. So I'm trying to get him to come to the call to prayer. Yeah. So pray, okay? His name is Joe Metal. M-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. Go on YouTube and check him out. Is that okay? Joe, J-O-E, Metal. M-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. Okay? Go check him out. Somebody type his name for me. Joe Metal. Metal. M-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. M E T T L E. The Joe part is right, but the metal. M E T T. Thank you, Lady Anne. Joe Metal. That's it. Go on YouTube. You know, like his music. If you can, even buy some on iTunes and support him. Okay? He's just a fantastic guy. Like his spirit is right. Listen to him. You know, he sings the English and then he sings the Ghanaian languages as well. Yeah. So please, okay, just go. You know, just check him out and buy some of his music. Okay? Apostle Jim, yeah, Joe Metal. Check him out. Woman of God, about the married thing, do me a favor, email me, okay, I'll call you. Okay, let's talk on the phone. Let's see what the Lord, you know, the counsel, wise counsel, okay? So, okay, Joe Meta, I'm going to try and get him to come to a call to prayer. Hey! Helele Basia, he's got oil. Yes, Lord. Joe Metal, check him out, okay? Go on YouTube and listen to him. You know, yes, Lord. Ha! Balala Basia, and he's got an excellent spirit. So support him, okay? I'm going to get him to come to call to prayer. If you support him, I'll bring him. Okay? Imagine having a worship session just with him. Hey! Halalabasia. Velelebozia. Jessica, yes, Lord. Ha! Jessica, you will live and not die. Hey! I said you will live and not die, Jessica. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Ha! Sorry. I was getting ready to leave. Let me turn up a little bit. Hey! Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Cool. Everybody let your voice say. Oh, nation. See, that's the song he's singing. In, in our language. Oh, nations shall praise your name. Amen. Amen. This is a carol. All nations shall praise your name. Hey! Yes, Lord.
Okay? Hey! So go buy some of his stuff, okay? Support him. He's a very good guy. Okay? God bless you. I'll see you tonight. Sister Carol T9. Hey! We stop this bleeding in Jesus' name. Ha! We dry up the fountain of this blood. Put your hand on your belly, woman of God, wherever you are. Okay, thank you. As soon as I come up and I see the number, just give me a few hours, okay? I'll call you, okay? In the name of Jesus, woman with the issue of the blood. When you meet Jesus, the blood has to dry up because there's only one blood that has flown. That saves, delivers, and sanctifies. In the name of Jesus, we command the fountain of this blood to dry up. Hey, dry up in Jesus' name. I release you from this bondage. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive that breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Balalabasia. Velevozia. Pasikapa. Zivro. Satalabra. In the name of Jesus. We claim that healing. We claim that healing in Jesus' name. We take it by force. In the name of Yeshua the Christ, the Son of the living God. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See, woman of God, if you believe it's a miscarriage, please go to the hospital and let them check it out, okay? Just to be on the safe side, okay? If you believe that that's what it is, just get to the doctors, let them check you out, okay? Give you a clean bill of health, okay? In Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you all. I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Hey! Goodbye.